Is that is that how it's gonna be? What? Like with the tree in the middle and us barely visible on each side? Oh, is it not visible? Or can, can, I guess it is a little weird, huh? I'll take it. Can't really see the monitor. No, it's fine. Should we move it? Oh my god. Is that a real tree? Yeah. Why? And we're gonna decorate it. Oh, okay. There's lights. Not right now, right? No. Yeah. You okay? That was also all right, we're doing this podcast. Jordan's doing it from there. Hey, Ethan, what did you think of the, the episode? Um, what I expected. Welcome to Rebels React to The Mandalorian, Chapter 6, The Prisoner. The Prisoner. The Prisoner. Um, okay, we've had some comments on past videos, but I don't know if we want to get right into this episode first. No, we're going to talk about this episode. So I don't know if you remember, I, I was, I had a theory that it was going to be one, two, three, mm-hmm. four and five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. And I guess it's not exactly that. Yeah. Cause none of this really is going to lead into the next episode. As far as we know. Probably not. There was some key stuff in here though. Sure. The Carl. Sp- spoilers by the way. Yes. This is always spoilers. Yeah. So the Carl Weathers hologram. Mm-hmm. Um, that hints at something else about to, cause think about it. We didn't hear about him. Like all of that didn't exist right. for like the last okay. episode. Yes. Obviously I think there will be a tie in from this episode to the next. Yeah. I don't think any of these characters will show up. No, but next they, episode. I, they will be back. Yeah. The fact he spared them. They were, which is some great. of the best characters that we've had yet. Oh, damn it. Um, I was going to remember her name and I, I, I didn't. Twy. Um, she on. Shion. Love her. Yeah. I've been so my my concern had been a little like I was like less concerned because I knew they were gonna have a Twilek. Yeah. And like so I wasn't upset that I saw that. And also right. she was she's been on a bunch of promotional material sure. now. They wanted you to know she was in not it. Not how I expected what I expected from her character. She p- so do you she know who great. it was? I, do you want do you super, want to know? She looked super familiar. I know you don't like knowing that stuff. No, 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 no. With this stuff it's fine. It was the um Who was the gunslinger guy? I think he he's familiar. I think he's a com, 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 comedian. Yeah, maybe. is that how they say it? Uh, in Star Wars, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, Bill Burr. Yeah, that, it. that dude Killed is. It. I hope he likes Star Wars. He probably doesn't care about Star Wars. He <laughs> definitely likes Star Wars. I don't. I've listened you to him on a podcast, not, and he's not. You wouldn't the do hugest this. Star Wars fan. You wouldn't do this. If yes, you didn't he would. Like Star Wars. Yes, he would. Why? I'm not saying he doesn't like Star Wars. I don't think he's like a huge Star Wars fan though. Which is good. I don't want a bunch of hardcore Star Wars nerds right. playing these parts. It won't. It won't be good. He's great. He's yeah. a good actor. Yeah, he is. Um. So she was. Do you remember the wildling from Game of yep. Thrones mm-hmm. who yep. took mm-hmm. care of yep. uh, Bran? Yep. yep. I love. She was I one of my rec- favorite I knew, characters. I knew I recognized her. I and knew she the played this so oh, yeah. well. Like her lisp because of her like vampire teeth and the way she like. I loved. She was so great. I was so bummed. So, like I didn't think he killed her. Yeah, but I was like, no, please don't kill her. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think he killed her. Thankfully, he killed her brother. I definitely thought that he killed Hellboy. Yeah, because he looked very dead. So you you saw so okay. So this this episode starts. He lands in this hangar. Mm-hmm. Now immediately he starts talking to the guy with the belly. Yeah, and I was my so my initial reaction was this is better, but I'm also weary after mm-hmm. the last episode. Yes, with the hangar woman, and. It didn't take very long to be like instantly better casting instantly better. And that's why the other episode is so bad. Yeah. Beca- because it's so, it's so clearly better in this and it can be better in mm-hmm. this. And I, to take a step, even the robot was better casting everything. Yeah. And just to take a step back for a second, I think when they when this is all out and they get everybody's reaction to everything, they're going to have a better idea of what worked, what didn't work, and what to do moving forward. Yeah. So I, I do have faith that they will be able to figure this out. Yeah. But I've been very sad for the last week. Right. It, like, I, I, it got to the point where I'm like, this show's not good. I'm happy that f- there was, like, that middle two episodes of four and five, right? Yeah. I'm happy I, I at least liked four. Yeah. And then five was, like, a huge dip. Yeah. And then I had seen something on Reddit that said that this episode is, like, way better than both of those episodes. I'm like, okay. See, right, I, I didn't see go. any of that, yeah. thankfully. Yeah. But I had faith that it would be. Because you can't have three bad, three bad, three 
not great episodes, like amazing episodes in a row, can kill a show. Yeah. Two almost did. Yeah. And, and four not being bad, but five makes four worse, in my opinion. For sure. Because you... It's like, oh, okay. Because they had some of the same issues. Yeah. Just elevated yep. in episode five. Yep. Um, and this makes four now not as bad. Like, it... it makes four, four not as bad? It doesn't stand out at all to me. Now it's just five is bad. Yes. And oh, I, well, four is my favorite. No, well, I know. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> this was very good. Um, this hit from the beginning to the end. It was right on with pacing and feel and everything. And characters yep. multiple characters yep. interacting with each other that yep. have history and aren't like strangers to each other like there's dialogue and good dialogue tension the, i the, the tension was my favorite part that i was like with oh the, my God, with what's the, the scene from the office where they're all like pointing the guns all at of, each other the whole episode i now, didn't know what was gonna ha- i legit didn't know what was gonna happen i will say that for me yeah. the episode did kind of come to a grinding halt Okay. Once they all just started walking around yes, the ship. I agree. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. When it would like show the robot looking around this not very big ship for the fourth time, like a few feet farther and then wipe to the next person walking around the ship. I'm like, what's going on? It was, it was only <laughs> so, do something. It was only 10 minutes. If you think about the, the amount of time that was passing. Yeah. Um, but it, it did slow they a little should there. have been in kind of a hurry though. They're just kind of like. No, and I, I agree. And, and, and what's her name? Sheon. Like, she's just kind of chilling. It's not like she's, like, walking because she's yeah. cautious. Like, she's just hanging out. I think... Maybe I'll run into him. Yeah, they were either very confident or also very concerned. And it was this weird <laughs> mix of what was, like... Because, yeah, they didn't, didn't want to run through. There were clearly still more droids. Yeah. Um, I, I'm okay with it, though, because of, like, the cool setting. It, it looked... The, the red lights, it looked very matter. cool. Yeah, yeah. It, because all, everything else around it is so strong. Yeah. That part is... Um, it's fine. I know I did note it. I did feel I was like, oh, okay. We're we're, we're just kind of walking around. Yeah. But even still, I was like, this is them just walking around was better than all of episode five. True. And so I was like, I'm okay with this. It it, it added to the episode length a little because if if you cut that out and it just goes straight from that plot point to that plot point, it might have felt a little rushed. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. It's that tricky balance. Yeah. Uh, question I have. Yeah. That ship. It was a rebellion ship. That they were New Republic. A, New Republic. So think about it. This is five years after Return of the Jedi. Uh-huh. Empire is gone. Right. Republic is back in control. It's now the New Republic. Okay. Um, everybody's on top. This is 25 years. I just watched Force Awakens. Yeah. So literally watching that and then putting this into context, like th- when Force Awakens happened, that's the turning point. Things haven't gone bad yet. Yeah. The New Republic is destroyed during that movie. Right. For 25, 30 years before that, they were in charge. Yeah. And this is kind of getting to see like, oh, the good guys are in charge. I was just, I was kind of confused because like that little mouse droid thing. Was Imperial. That, it is, right? Yeah. And then, but then you have like the rebel, or no, even that helmet was Imperial looking, but Which it had helmet? like rebel coloring to it. Like the, the guy that was on the ship with the weird. Yeah, it was a rebel helmet. It is. Oh yeah. Those were the, rep, the rebels it, on no, the. No, it was so big though. Yeah. yeah no, that's how they okay, are. Okay. Yeah. So what I was going to say, so they, when we meet the crew, mm-hmm. which I was an awesome scene, yeah. um, back, going back, I know we're jumping around a little bit, but when you first meet the crew before they, they take off. So we see the red guy and I know I kind of reacted to that. Yeah. Have you placed him yet? No. Okay. You which one did you just watch Four. Four. when they go into the cantina on Moss Eisley? Oh, there's like a hell looking dude. Yeah. Huh? Hell, hell looking devil nope, looking nope, guy. Nope. That is, that is exactly the <laughs> right way to describe that. And since I was a kid until now, every time I watch that, I'm like, that's such a weird, interesting character that they made. Right. And they just gave him some lore. Do we see another one like Never. him ever? Never. On uh, Maz's, in Maz's bar? No, there's other weird people. Yeah. Because uh, since I just watched that, yeah. um, that looks similar, but not that species. Okay. And I'm pretty confident that was a direct tie to that species from yeah. from four. Never would have thought we would have seen another one of those. I, guys. I really like stuff like that. It's I like love you it. get to see like, oh, there's more than one of you. Exactly. Obviously, it, it just makes it feel like a real race. Uh, another one. Yeah. The dude with the four arms, the like the monkey looking dude in the cell, looks like the guy from Solo. Solo. I'm so sad when he died. Too. Me too. John Favreau. I I had forgotten that. I don't think I knew that. Yeah. Who wrote this episode? Okay. Oh, and directed so this I want episode. to shout out. The director of this episode. Because um, I know the last three, like, four episodes kind of jumped around. It was like Favreau, Favreau, Favreau for writing, then Filoni, 
and then it kind of jumped around a little bit. Okay, directed by Rick Moranis Famuyiwa. Okay, I don't. Who also actually, directed sounds... episode two? Okay, I believe two. Yes. Okay. So he directed the child, Ooh, and no. he has now directed the prisoner. Who wrote it? That's what the I. The writer thinking. is Christopher Yost. Yost, who has that sounds been, familiar. He, he's he's been in the rest of the stuff. Um, and Rick Famuyiwa. He wrote it too. Yes. Okay. That's the teleplay. Speaking of directors, yes. Did you notice who the uh, X-wing pilots were at the end of the episode? They seemed like people that I've seen in it's something else. Rick Famuyiwa. Okay. Well, I don't know what he looks like. No, I'm just saying. Okay. Deborah Chow. Okay. Director of two episodes of The Mandalorian okay. and the like showrunner for the Obi Wan Kenobi show. Very cool. And Rick, uh, Dave Filoni. Currently, Dave Filoni in horrible standing with me. Mm. Despite everything he did with Clone Wars, mm-hmm. I am doubting everything he's capable of <laughs> after what a train wreck episode five or chapter five was. Yeah. T- really truthfully, yeah. he needs to redeem himself. But he also directed episode one. Did he? Yeah. But he didn't write it. Well. He wrote. Okay, what are we episode. what are we holding people accountable for? Writing to me is more important. Okay. Because that you have created the episode. Right. Directing it and making sure everything goes where it needs to go, and that's that's another thing. It's important. That's important. Yeah. But like the plot, the dialogue, the character, all of that, I think goes more to the writing. Yeah. And not good, regardless. Because he should yeah. be coming up with the best ideas. Right. And he came up with the worst ideas. I don't know. How how could he do that? Like He went way too much with fan service. Yeah. And it was failed miserably. Speaking of minor fan service in this episode, I loved when they said that his ship looked like a Canto Bite uh I thought that was so interesting. Uh, Jack, jackpot thing. Slot uh, machine. Slot machine. Yeah. It just made me happy because it like re- m- insinuating that it looks like a piece of crap, which is how I feel about Cantabite. So was it, was that what they, was I that? Don't know. They That's how I wanted, I, it, that's how I want to take it, it, it. So it felt a little weird to reference Cantabite. It just feels like I'm raising my hand and being like last Jedi reference <laughs> or raising my hand going new hope reference. Like, it, it's not necess- it's not innately that uh-huh. but I, I I feel that a little bit yeah um, I'm still okay that they did it yeah it was like the, I, I I loved it so that made me super happy it was it was even like when he was like what are you like gungan under there yeah and I was like I love it but also I'm like everybody knows what a gungan is yeah, I would think so. Maybe after the prequels, now they know what guns sure. are because it's been of a all long that, time because all that went down. Well, they're also, I mean, Jar Jar's like a he was a senator. No, that's what I was. That's what I meant because so, it's like he he maybe made them like uh, noticed relevant. Yeah, yeah, to where people would know what that was. Right. Um, I thought so that was hilarious. I, I, no, it, it is. Yeah, it is funny. Um, I get I get torn with stuff that's like clearly to make us go, ha ha. But that's their job, so it's like fine. I think I think the, a show is the right place for that. Yes, a movie, no, no. So this is fine. This is meant to be more fun. Yeah, and this episode was very fun. Yeah, it, flat out. Yeah, it was. I I love the whole. When I realized, I was like, "Ooh, we got a heist episode. Yes. This is this is gonna be this is gonna be fun." I was very curious who the prisoner was gonna be. Mm-hmm. I was a little bit let down. Yeah, Since I, it was someone we didn't... I thought it would be somebody. No, and then he's just dead. But I do like that he wasn't... He was somebody that, that like you had mentioned earlier, where like these characters had history. Right. That he was somebody where it's like, oh, Mando abandoned him. And I was like, that's interesting. They have beef. Like, and, and the whole episode... Like, we didn't know. I was... I it, You felt like something was going on yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. Like they were being friendly, but also like, oh, he has no idea what's about to happen. Yeah. And he was suspicious too. And so for it, for that to happen and then immediately he gets thrown in there, I was like, oh, let's go. <laughs> I got excited at that point because I was like, I want to see this dude break out. I love the way he broke out. It was it's so cool. So badass. And I love the way he like snuck up behind the droids the first time and <laughs> destroyed them all. That that was best. My favorite fight scene, I think, so far in this It was series. really cool. Because the way just... Used everything he had to take him down. Yeah, but effectively. He yeah. also used everything he had to fight Hellboy, and it almost didn't work. Including the... <laughs> Flamethrower to the no, face. No, 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 no. Oh, oh and he, the whispering birds things. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, they don't work on him. Yeah, they didn't trigger him. They didn't... Well, no, they just missed and, like, I don't think it affected him. 
Yeah, I mean, they didn't even hit him. I don't think like they didn't lock onto him for some reason. A room. Possibly because it looked, it looked like, like it, the they, it was just chaos. Like yeah. it's not that it was him that like deflected them for some reason, but yeah. like I think it, they just went. Nuts. He was strong. Yeah, oh yeah. Took that one robot, bashed it in the ground, threw it into the other robot. Probably should have lost that fight. Mando? I still don't understand what happened. I also did he? Why was he at the door? Was he trying to get out or? All of a sudden, he was stuck holding a door up. I missed how well, he, he had got like in. throw. He like pushed him out or something. Okay. And then as he's coming back in, he dropped the door on him. And he caught it. Yeah. I missed that somehow. But yeah. then he closed more doors on him. Yeah. But he was still fine. I yeah. It was a. I think another door like a little farther up. I I assumed it just. But then what happened when half? he opened the doors? Did he have to fight him more? What do you mean? So the doors are now closed. Mando is locked in this room. How did he get him in the cell? He hasn't won a fight. He's just blocked him off. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I didn't understand that. Uh, I wanted to highlight a couple of yes. comments from our previous episode. Thank you for commenting. If you did, we appreciate uh, your feedback. Very um, much. Algernon Radish said, first of all, great pod and that he enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. He's glad that we weren't super down on the last episode i think we kind of were i think we tried not to be we tried not like like how i'm being like just overtly like it sucked we we tried to look for the positives yes um but i mean we 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 told it how it was reflecting on it for a week and how i was feeling it's rough like it yeah um he said that he really liked it Um, okay so hey that's a i'd love to hear like and I'll that t- side he it. says why he says as someone who's old enough to have grown up on Saturday morning matinees in the original trilogy uh, this has given me those feelings exactly and at the same time adding flavor to places I knew and showing me places I've never seen uh, to me John Favreau is chasing what Lucas and Spielberg did precisely those type of matinee shows that they loved to watch growing up and to me he's done it perfectly that's not something that we can like well, that's, relate to that's more about the whole series uh, yeah but because Favreau that's, wasn't even involved in the last episode. Because I think people got very down on the whole show after right. the last episode. Right. I didn't do that. I'm still I'm still a believer in this show. I right. still like the character, the Mandalorian. I think I think what he's touching on is that feel of TV. Yeah. Right. That a lot of people are like, oh, we didn't want that in this. But that's what they've wanted to do all along. Right. And I think it'll evolve. I don't think the Obi Wan show will necessarily be like that. I totally see the cassie and andor show being like that though and that's that's that I, i'll like that yeah i'll enjoy that um this is was in the middle for me like yep. cassie and i'm fine with it being whatever yeah. every episode i really don't care this i wanted to have a little bit more structure and the obi-wan show better have it has to structure be. to the entire thing to it it should be a three movie trilogy cut up yeah something along those lines seriously um and this is you know like wavering back and forth yeah. for me and i'm i'm in a good place with it at the Same. moment um and i knew more good episodes and finishing the season strong then the whole package will be viewed stronger right he also commented on like it being people saying like they want it to be bingeable um and like he thinks people are too quick to like turn on the show like i agree that's that's you get you get some good episodes and then you get a bad one and then everyone's turned off from the show immediately um unfortunately when you do and that's what i've been thinking about this a lot if this show comes out in binge format then everybody's reaction is to the show as a whole right when you do it week by week you get an episode by episode reaction so it's like yeah you know what there might be an off episode but they brought it back i don't the show will not go down in history as like they had that one bad episode that feeling that i had all week is gone Right. And and I was actually even excited for this episode because I still believed that they could bring it back. But like I I never wanted there to be a bad episode. No. Nope. But this is what I wanted. Yep. I wanted to live with the show yep. week to week to week. Absolutely. Whatever it may be. And we can you know, like relate to other people with that and then enjoy a new one. The journey is fun. Yeah. Um best meister or best mister said uh clone wars were pre-empire later there were a lot of purges including those of jedi and later mandalorians themselves empire was like the nazi and didn't tolerate alien species in places of power or the army we are now in the mandalorian timeline where all odd looking species just start to get out from slavery or places of hiding but still don't want to place attention on themselves commenting on why everyone's yep. human um that's why i think we see more human types everywhere the rest was kind of killed off or still hiding 
uh, or went off to Coruscant to make new galactic laws. I think that's a great point. Uh, no, it I, makes sense. I do too. I've been thinking about this a lot now, like going back and watching all the original movies and generally speaking, there's been a lot of humans, right? I was watching force awakens and when Han gets boarded, both those crews on both sides are, they're all humans and we're never like, why is it people for the most part for the, they speak other languages, but right. they're, there's some weird dudes in there. I think uh, there might be, I, I, I don't remember. Tell that the Ganja club. And human, right? Like, yeah. Right. Uh, and even on Jakku, like, generally, lots of humans. So I think, I think, right. I think what we're feeling is a focus on human characters, but it's accentuated by weird people like the mechanic in the last episode. Exactly. And they, and then again, this episode would completely throw all that up. When you get the Bill Burr guy and the, the belly guy, like you said, in the hangar, like, they make it feel. Better. Yeah, they were great. Yeah. yeah, I'm like these are believable and humans Mando's in the universe. A human. Yep. He wears a helmet, so we don't realize it all the time. But, but, but then you also had the two Twi'leks, the yeah. droid, and the other guy, and it, I immediately was like, this is balanced, perfectly balanced. Yeah. You get a, another cool droid, Zero. Interesting name. Yeah, that was just cool. Zero, and a little bit more um, into Mando not liking droids. I still think there's gonna we're gonna get more there. So. Uh, Levin again commented on our episode. Yes. Thank you for commenting again. Thank you for the support. Yes, very much. He said, as to why Mando may hate droids, uh, my take is that he's still pissed at the droids for purging his village and killing his parents. That would make a lot of sense. I didn't even think about that. The super battle droid. Oh my God. Thank you. Why Uh, did I not realize that? (sighs) That, I mean, there may be something else, but if for right now we need an answer, that makes perfect sense. I, I think that's a, I think that is what it is. I mean, he's I'm, traumatized. I'm, yeah. We've seen the flashbacks. Yep. They were coming to get him and he's hiding in that box. Well, just thinking about how a, t- a TV show format, they've they've hinted at him not liking droids and shown us a direct reason as to why he wouldn't. Right. For I did not connect those two. I didn't either. And <laughs> they, yeah, that makes complete sense. There and, might still be more to it, but. Yeah. The droids in this episode, mm-hmm. the in the ship, something we've never seen before. There were. I mean, oh, they yeah, kind of sucked. New droids. But it was cool to see new droids. They didn't suck. He's just really good. There it is. Uh, he also asks another question. Um, he says, what the heck happened on Moss Isley? Something wicked happened there since we last saw it. Droids are now bartenders in the bar they were previously banned from. Stormtroopers, stormtroopers heads on spikes. My question is, do you think we'll get to witness the collapse of Moss Eisley with our own eyes someday? Uh, would have to be on a different show, probably, or a flashback from the bounty target lady from this episode, the previous episode. But Unf- he's right. It was very... Un- unfortunately, no. I don't think we'll see I- it. I think what, what they were showing us is purely post-Empire. Right. It's like, hey, look at this place that we saw... When the Empire, what, they weren't there, but they were temporarily there because they were in, f- like in four, in, in four. That's what right. I'm talking about. Yeah. You had stormtroopers in the in Mos Eisley. They weren't like occupying that they weren't, city. Or they anything. were looking, sp- they were there specifically, just, literally just for just the droids. Down. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there was a lot going on. There was like the weird dinosaurs and speeders going around yeah. all over the place. It felt very that I think is budget. Unfortunately, I think that's part of it too. But I like to rationalize those things. Like, I like a reason for it. Like, I understand if that's budget, but give me a good reason as to why so that I forgive that. I'd need to hear it from them. Right. Unfortunately. Because the Stormtrooper helmets on spikes was super cool. Mm -hmm. Um, But but when you have an established place that's buzzing and busy and then you see it. That's interesting, though. There's nobody there. Why were there Stormtroopers there? the helmets and stuff yeah uh, n- now that could be for that is much later than a new hope they could have gone back to occupy for whatever reason for whatever so, i mean it's, just, it's such a unimportant place seemingly but who knows uh he also insinuates that uh the gunslinger as you suggest from the last episode yeah. the assassin lady he thinks she's still alive i i think she has she kind of has to be right Based on this, characters are one use and out, so there's no guarantee that she is. Um, well, most of the like cameos, yeah, they haven't. Well, besides IG Eleven, yeah, although he could come back, like Taika c- could come back. Mm-hmm. Most of the cameos, possibility for return. Oh yeah, Gina Carano, all three from this episode. So her, 
who is the voice of Milan, I did not realize. I, yeah. <laughs> um, Original Milan. I believe she she could probably still come back. It, it would be a waste of a character in my and opinion. And it would make that episode a little bit better, possibly. Oh, yeah. If that if that is part one of some bigger yeah. arc, if the arc is with seven or eight, it would it would elevate five. Yeah. Um, it, it would make me happy. Get rid of the idiot with the earring. Everyone else moves on. But, and he died, and has a though. Bet- yeah, get, Thankfully, yeah, he yeah, died. That's what I'm saying. Get rid of him. Yeah. He's dead. Move on from him yeah. and do something cooler elsewhere, and then we can be okay with that episode. It's just setting up her. Yeah. But um, do you have anything else to say about this episode? Uh, I'm very excited for next week. Yeah. Um, I love how it ended with the, with the, uh, the token thing, because that dude was about to kill him. Like, no shame. Yeah. He was about to murder him dead. Uh, we kind of briefly, like, skimmed over the fact that these X-Wing, like, rebel pilots came in to kill them. That was amazing. That was nice to that see. That was so cool. That was, a good, that was a good connection to everything. That's the amount of stuff we need. Yes. You don't need a big battle. Three X-Wings popping in, taking care Take of Take care of work. Yeah. And we're out. Seeing them flying around just on, on like, uh, runs at the end. So they blew up the inside, and then they're outside just... Yeah. Do another run. That now take it out. The ship that they were about to send after Mando, I wanted that thing to escape. I thought first that thing was, was cool, away. and I wanted to know who was in there. I who were they sending after I him? I didn't want it to escape because I was very concerned about him dying. Not that he's gonna die, right. but I was like, oh my god, that thing needs to not get out. Oh man, it was really cool. Yeah, no, <laughs> it was like Poe's version. It, it was like painted all like black and like red stripes. Kind of looked sick. like a clone. What were those called? It looked like the ship that Obi-Wan flew away from um, the place where he killed Grievous, but like painted black. I know which I, I'm going to, I want to look it up again. Yeah. It's like very Art yeah, Deco-y it was, kind it was of was like a, a sports car. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did. Yes. Baby Yoda. Got another meme moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did what? I do that? That was awesome. I really... I was like, oh, so for a second, I was like, oh, is he going to like, when he first put his hand up, and mm-hmm. I'm like, what are you going to do with this droid? I think he's going to pull the door down again. Ooh, no. See, I was like, for whatever reason, I was like, is he going to turn this droid off? Oh, like use his force to just switch this droid off. Oh, man, I would love that. Here. As a hater of droids, he's like, turn that one off. I, I think there's, there's going to be some more bonding going on here. Yeah. We got to see how much he really does care about this kid, the child. Like, he's not even annoyed with him ever anymore. Nope. Like, the kid can do no wrong when to him. When he hit the ground. Oh, when God. He, fell. he tumbled. Oh, that yeah. That was heartbreaking. Because for me, the biggest thing is I want the child to know Mando cares about him. Yes. And I think he does. I think he does, too. I, at this point. Um, I, I love he, I love like, it. he took the ball off and gave it to him. Yes. I really wanted it to float down. Because I they're, really want that. They're really emphasizing their this relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that's what f- four was. Five didn't. That that's I think my biggest Not criticism about five was it seemed like he just didn't care about him all of a sudden. He left him with a stranger. And, and I think who that, seemed like she was going to take care of him, but she kind of did. It's not really a safe place think, either. You know what? That's probably what they were going for. Because I think it was a mistake. I think the way they handled Mando and the child's relationship and five was a mistake. However, thinking about it, I bet that the way Filoni was thinking about this was like, oh, don't worry. He's safe with this woman in Mando knows this that motherly character. And he trusts her to yeah. take care of him. I wasn't confident in that. Yeah. I don't think anybody was confident in that. And that's why it feels a little like, dude, you got to be more careful with this child. Yeah. But maybe he still doesn't even know to the gravity of what this is. <laughs> I loved when Bill Burr was like, did you guys make that? <laughs> oh, that was great. He, he was, he killed it. Yeah. When you have somebody so recognizable, yeah. Oh, when you have somebody so recognizable and they pull it off that yeah. smoothly, kudos to him. But season two, probably right. Like it would, it would feel yeah. a little bit forced to bring him back because I don't think it's episode seven, so it would have to be episode eight, and that seems a little bit too quick. So my only theory is that episode eight is going to be the return of the cameos. Of everyone, Th- this whole uh, or a couple of people where it's like they get back. That's what a video game does. Is you you meet these people and then right at the end they're like, hey, you met me on that one side mission. Here I am to help you. So the only one we're still waiting for is the guy from Breaking Bad, Gus Gus Fring. I can't think of his 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 name right now. I think kind he, of funny he says I, it all the time. I, I still forget it. think he was the guy at the end of five. I agree. 
Um, so, but then we also still need to get uh, the boxing guy. Uh, There's another guy? No. I, we need him back from episode three. Who did he not kill at the end of episode three? Carl Weathers? Carl Weathers. He's he, boxing he's guy? Tossed, yeah. He's uh, Apollo Creed. Oh. I didn't realize that. Yeah. I thought you meant he was an actual boxer. In Star Wars? No. Oh, in, in real life. Real life. No, no, no. And I was like, I don't think I've heard of Carl Weathers, the fighter, <laughs> but that makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, he, Michael B. Jordan's I, He dad. has to come back. Th- I haven't watched any of those movies, so I have no idea if that's the connection. Michael B. Jordan's dead. Yes. <laughs> yes, that, correct. Is that? Okay. <laughs> yes. I was like, Carl Weathers is Michael B. Jordan's dad? I'm like, what's going on? Yes. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm, on, I'm on board now. I need to watch those movies. I do too. Apparently, they're great. They're, uh, Rocky 1 through 5 is on Netflix. I think I've seen all of those. Oh, wow. I have not. <laughs> Maybe just to four. That counts. <laughs> I heard two is the only good one. Or whatever the one with the Russian guy. One is the best one. What's the one with the Russian guy? Two. Two. I've heard two is the best one. I would I would disagree. I mean, I've, just, I've just heard that. Yeah. That's all. One was best picture. Really? Yeah. There you go. But what does that mean? Exactly. It just means it's the best what picture. What do you think? What is your favorite Rocket? Rocket? What is your favorite Rocky movie? Comment below. Do we want to know that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let us know what you think about this episode. <laughs> Ask us a question and also... To let us know that you watched this entire video, what's your favorite Rocky movie? There you go. <laughs> uh, also, subscribe, please. We would appreciate it. Yes. Um, we're trying to build the rebellion. And so, like. Yeah. Do like, all that share, stuff. share. Tweet us. Tweet. Um, follow. Subscribe. Hit the bell. I'm just trying to think of all the things I've heard. Ding that bell. Smash that like button. There we go. <laughs> Ding. Until next time. My name is Jordan. And my name is Ethan. We are the Huber Rebels. See you later. This is the way. This is, this is the way. Yeah, that was great.